Good morning, Leah. We are now live. Good morning, Allison. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Oh, frustrated. I've, 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 I've you know, I'm old. So I uh, have been trying to schedule my COVID vaccine because this morning, today's the first mm -hmm. day I'm eligible. And yeah. there were like three times I thought, okay, I'm doing it. And then I get this message like, hey, we can't schedule this because we can't schedule your second dose. I'm like, oh, okay. why do you say it's, and then there's like, oh, this place has stuff available. They've got appointments available. So you go and you schedule the appointment. They're like, yeah, but we don't have any vaccine available. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've just been. I'm sorry. That does sound frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> get your hopes up and then and then be told actually that is not available i someone else was telling me about that too that um yeah you get on there and you're like yeah i can schedule this day i can make it that day i can go to that appointment and then you find out that they don't have vaccine available at that time so i don't i i do not envy uh the people who had to come up with the system and create and maintain that sign up system i it's it's not something I want to be part of. I, I, it sounds like it was probably a lot of work. Yes. And I am on two waiting lists for two places. Mm -hmm. I don't know like if I'll get a call from them before yeah. I'm able to schedule an appointment or. Right. Right. Good morning, yes. Liz. Welcome. Good morning, Liz. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, well, I, that that I, I hope you're on the air. Oh, no, you're fine. I hope that it comes through soon, though, and that you get something. I'm sure that today is going to be the craziest of all the days. Yeah. Because yeah. it opened today. And I actually thought about that when it opens for 16 and older because I won't reveal my age. Just assume I'm I'm 18. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, just, just assume I'm forever young. Um, and Hello. I'm assuming that I am just – I might not even, like, try that day. I may just try, like – over the weekend or that Monday, I am on a waiting list with the health department already, but I know they won't get to me. You know, I know that how that yeah. works. So I don't know. It's exciting though. It is very, very exciting. Liz um, uh, has us on mute because she's in a meeting and there is no closed captioning option. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's one of those, we're using a third party to go into. So like they aren't working together well and it's been, been a little yeah. bit of a nightmare. So, but I do know this doesn't help you now, but I think that afterwards closed captioning shows up because whenever I'm scrolling my Facebook and my, our faces suddenly yeah. show up on Facebook and I'm like, Oh gosh, um, there's usually closed captions there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah. And when we, but there's a problem getting those closed captions when they save the, the, cause they put this um, on YouTube later, YouTube. Yeah. there's been a problem with getting the closed captioning to, um, like transfer, transfer like to download and transfer with the video. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been fun. People in my part department have been going back and editing the closed caption. So yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't understand it all. Mary's in charge of that. I don't have to worry. Oh, poor Mary. I was gonna say, is, that, is that a task that uh, you assigned to someone who's like made you mad or been, you know. <laughs> no, I assigned it to people who are like looking for jobs to do and mm -hmm. are, you know, good at that kind of thing and care about accessibility because we care about accessibility. I know, I know. Mary says that she is getting closed captioning. Well, that's important. That's good yeah. to know. I wonder why Melanie's getting it, but Liz is not. Liz is not. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. And I didn't mean like doing captions is a bad job because I've actually thought about before that's something you can work from home and do and yeah. different types of caption transcription. And I've always thought that sounded like intriguing and appealing to me. I more meant that they had to watch us. I oh, didn't mean to work. Yeah. I meant having to go sit them in a corner. And they, don't seem to mind. they don't seem to mind. Although we do talk over each other sometimes and they're like, well, <laughs> Sorry, I have always been really bad about interrupting people. It is like one of my like big character flaws. Like I'm mm -hmm. an interrupter. I have been trying not to do it as much. I will say like my brother-in-law is one of those people that are like constantly interrupt. Like he'll start talking about something and I'll get excited. Oh. Like, oh, I know something about that too. Yes. And I interrupt him. <laughs> well, I think, I think it is just about being excited. And I think that on here we can, whether it's true or not, we can, 
try to blame there being like a weird delay because we are in different places talking on this camera. Sometimes you don't know the other person is going to start talking. And then sometimes you try to avoid doing the thing where you both stop and start repeatedly and it's ridiculous. So you just kind of plow through and keep going. I know I do that. I'm like, I'm just gonna keep going. And then we don't do stop, start awkwardness. Yes. And um, it looks like Carrie's offering suggestions for how to turn on the auto generated captions. Um, okay. And Tara is also an interrupter. Hey, Tara. <laughs> interrupter. Okay. Um, and I'm interrupting you now to say that Tara is also a person who's very excited about things, though. Yeah. Like, no, you know, <laughs> that's it. Like, I get excited. I'm just like, yes, I want to contribute to this. But, yeah. um, and oh, she had it turned off. She found it. Yay! <laughs> oh, great. Audrey also had said that the closed clap captioning was helping her and she was able to turn it on. So good. Great. Now listen. <laughs> now let's can hear us. Not only can you can hear us, you can read, read us. us. Read us and listen to her, her meeting. <laughs> of oh, course, it's good. I will warn you. I will warn you. Closed captioning spells my name incorrectly. Mm. <laughs> well, <Wow>. H. <laughs> well, no wonder. No wonder you're. It's just one more thing to add to your list about Facebook that your right. list of complaints. <laughs> um, so she says now she can. She clarifies she can be productive at work and listen it. And you know, as an audiobook listener and and things like that, some people really do like. It helps them to have one thing going while they're working on something else. I'm not like that, unfortunately. Um, really, any any outside thing distracts me, makes me bad at my job. But some people are not like that. Say your name. My name is Leah. Leah. <laughs> Leah. <laughs> is it spelling it incorrectly? I think it is. Uh, Audrey says she is also an interrupter. She's a very excited person. <laughs> Meetings with us are so much fun. We just <laughs> talk all over each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it just, I think that if that's the trade off for being an excited, curious person, then I think it's a fair trade off, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So I am excited that we have people here today and that uh, we've got closed captioning on so people can do two things at once because I am excited about our show today because um, yeah. we, we do have something planned and prepared. Did you want to talk about what you're reading before we get in? Um, I got. I, I haven't started it yet, but I got the Liar's Dictionary again. Okay, um, yes. As my hold came up again. And I have both the audiobook and the book book. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like, will I read or listen to either of them? I don't know. But it's like, it's yeah. one of those books I'm excited about. But I'm also like, uh, that introduction. I just want to read a romance again. Yeah. <laughs> because the introduction, it is it's the introduction. I'm like, yeah. hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I know somebody else who's currently reading that book. So um, if I talk to her about it or hear about it before next week or, you know, sometime, I'll let you know what her, she is actively reading it. So I imagine she's made it past yeah. the introduction. Okay. <laughs> I, I think, I think I just need to get past the introduction and yeah. it will be better. Into the like real regular story. Cause the introduction is stylized in a way to kind of like be like a dictionary and sort of point to dictionary things. And it's all about, being a preface and like what that means yeah dictionary prefaces and it's just like yeah yeah <laughs> right um you're like give me the romance is there a love story in this right? yeah. right, <laughs> if the words are arranged correctly yes of course there is <laughs> right. um well i'm excited about what i have to read next, I got the audio book of The Searcher by Tana French, which is her other standalone. I read The Witch Elm and that's I really liked it. I listened to The Witch Elm and I really liked it. I've never read anything else by her. I haven't read The Double Murder Squad yet, but um, this is the other standalone and I'm really excited to listen to it. And this weekend, I know it's supposed to be beautiful outside, um, but I need to do some housework. So I'm yeah. gonna like, clean the floors, clean the kitchen, you know, and stuff like that is also nice to do when it's nice outside. The light's coming in and you can like feel like you really cleaned it and did a good job. Um, and so I'm really excited because I'm gonna listen to that. Yes. While I do that. It is so much easier to do when you have a good audio book to listen to. Yes. <laughs> so I feel like I can really achieve something around my home this weekend while listening to that book because it will motivate me, you know, to get through it. So I am excited. I did begin it a little bit. Um, the uh, the main character is like a transplant to Ireland from Chicago. So the narrator does not have the Irish accent, but when he narrates the other characters, he does. 
So mm-hmm. like he goes back and forth, but the main narration is an American accent because the main character is American, which makes sense. So um, but it's still, so it's a little disappointing, but it's still so far, it's gonna be good narration. Like I said, accents for the proper people, you know? Um, so I am excited about it. So I'll report back about that on Friday. Yeah, I, I'm sure at some point I will get to that considering yeah. I've read all of her other books. Everything else. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will eventually get to that one. Yes. So you have to tell me if it's good. <laughs> oh, I will. I'm sure it will be. And at least at the very least absorbing, you know, they, she really like gives you just sort of that sense of the setting, but without being all about the setting, there's already, she's already described, there's a tree in the backyard. It's not a witch elm, but there's, it's not about the tree, it's about there's ravens. I yeah. think it's ravens everywhere in it. And he's like watching these ravens and, and they're like attacking an animal. And it, it just, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. You know, talking about ravens, there is, yeah. This book that I, I I bought it for the library like I don't know three or four years ago and I really want to read it and I've never gotten around to it. It's about the Raven Master at um the Tower. Is it the Tower of London? London Tower. I think so. I think you've told I me about this. It. It sounds right. Yes, and he like you know he's in charge of the ravens and there always have to be like a certain number of ravens or like the like legend has it that the monarchy is toppled or what I don't know. <laughs> comes to an end. I don't I don't know exactly yeah. what the, the thing is. Right. But his job is taking care of the ravens. He's the raven master. And like it's a very important job. And it's just like And this is a nonfiction book, book, right? Right. It's nonfiction. Nonfiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So true true story. Real Raven Master. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. I actually remember I think it was when maybe it was when we started curbside, you're like or something. You're like, I want to give this book to somebody. <laughs> I did. I would love to find out what they thought of it. They, they were like, you know, I read a little bit of everything. I'm really into history, like, yeah. you know, England, that kind of thing. She's but like, you know, I read a lot of English history. So I thought, you know what? If this person, if they're interested in all kinds right. of things and English right. history, it might be a good combo. Yeah, it might be so, a good fit. And then did you get, do you, did you end up giving it to them? I did. I did. I have no okay. idea whether or not they enjoyed it, but well, wow. um, okay, so Audrey says, if the Ravens ever leave the Tower of London, all of England will fall. So that does sound pretty dramatic. Yes. Um, better keep those Ravens there. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't really make any kind of appropriate segue into what we're gonna talk no, about. Today. Not at all. Basically, I'll, I'll introduce it by saying that, so I'm the technical services librarian, which means I receive all the new materials as they come in. And when we do a new order of mass market paperbacks, um, which are, those fat little paperbacks that you see in this, you know, like in the grocery store airport type of thing. Um, and at our library, we shelve those separately in part because of just shelving concerns and also because we can kind of group like items together. Um, and if you try it, those with regular books, you get like the regular books. Yes. Yeah. It, it's it, all it, awkward. It it's easier. So, so <laughs> when we get a new shipment of those in, we order them all together. When we get a new shipment of those in, we unpack them. And what we do in my department is we stand there in front of the shelf with our hands on our hips and we read the titles, we laugh at the titles, we laugh at the covers, and then we also count how many new Colton romances there are, which we will get into in a moment. And we just, we appreciate the, we appreciate the cover art, we appreciate the punny titles, and what we're talking about here are things like romances, um, cozy mysteries, and in no way are we making any judgments about reading them, because I will say, those of us looking at the spines of those also read those books, we just, it's undeniably funny. It is absolutely, and I think every month there's at least one title that Helen has. Helen orders most of the, she, all of the the paperbacks for for the main library. She'll be like, "Listen to this title," and she'll yes. or she'll send us out a book cover. <laughs> like at least one a month, we get one of those. So yes, yes. yes. And so the cover, and they are intent. They are being intentionally funny. The covers are intentionally over the top on many romance covers. Sometimes, I think I've mentioned this on here before, sometimes the cover art is like, almost like clip art generated, stock photo generated, and it doesn't make sense, which is also kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and then those cozy mysteries um, have, usually have puns and the words best in the puns. title. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we really, uh, we really like looking at those. And so Leah and I were talking about it and we thought we would mention talk about some of those books today, some of those great covers, great titles, and then just some of the tropes throughout. Yes. Do you want to go first since this was your idea? Oh, sure. I'll go first. 
Um, do you want to start with romance? Do you want to start with what? Romance, absolutely. Okay, we'll start with romance. Um, <laughs> I went ahead and I did. I did a little bit of research for this episode, um, and <laughs> just so that I could. I could. I don't know. Anyway, so the romance. A romance is. I just wanted to lay it out there. A romance is a story where there's a central love story and an emotionally satisfying and optimistic ending. So just because there's a love story in it, just because it's about a couple falling in love doesn't necessarily make it a romance in the traditional paperback romance, uh, you know, terminology. Um, and throughout it, the lovers risk and struggle things, risk and struggle like for their relationship and for one another. And at the end they're rewarded for that with like eternal love. Um, so, oh, <laughs> sorry, I was reading Tara's comment um, that, at another library, they posted titles with their names in them so that I can imagine replacing one word with your name and that would be really funny. That would um, be <laughs> so that's what we're looking at with romance novels, but romance novels then have all these subgenres. There's historical romances, there's contemporary no romances, there's romantic suspense, which mm -hmm. usually has like a thriller or mystery aspect to it. And that's where the Coltons lie. And I just wanna bring up the Coltons real quick because I didn't know about the Coltons until I started working here and in technical services. And, and my coworker said, oh yeah, the Coltons, the Coltons are like, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's the Harlequin Colton universe where they're all written by different authors, but the Colton family is a family with many, many branches. And they tend to have jobs in like the law enforcement world or okay. military. There's male Coltons and female Coltons. Um, well, good because families without both tend to, not that die off if you, yeah only yes that's a good point um <laughs> smart, smart on behalf of the harlequin line um i googled it and they said there were 139 colton titles but i feel like there have to be more colton titles than that so i brought i brought a couple here just to get you oh give you an idea these are the coltons of shadow creek colton's secret son the coltons of red ridge colton's deadly engagement Colton 911 Chicago. There's Colton 911 of different cities, undercover heat. And then finally, this is a new one, the Coltons of Grave Gulch, Colton Nursery Hideout. Ooh. Well, I, will say, I, I, I looked and in the two catalogs I have, there are four new Colton books. So 138, it's, it's gotta be yeah, long. That's how long do that many years. Yeah, and they're all, I think it started in like 2001 and they're all, they're all by different authors. Maybe one of those sub-series, like Colton 911 Chicago. Maybe that's like three books and the same person wrote those, but they're all by different people and they're just leaning into this Colton family. And I've never read any of these. I really don't know much about it beyond that, but I just wanted to make everybody aware. Like I said, there's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, there's also the Colton Universe and I wanted you to know about it. Brave Gulch. Right? <laughs> What do yeah. you have next? What do you have in the um, realm of? One of the things that I love about um, romance novels, well, I don't love it. I'd love to make fun of it. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that's <laughs> It's the yeah. lack of shirt wearing by men on the covers. <laughs> like, you know, they either have no shirt at all because, you know. Where did it go? Yeah. They don't know how to button their shirt. Yeah. And, you know, there's, it's just. Like what I I, have, I saw a library who did a display of romance books, and it was called "Dude, Where's Your Shirt?" And it was just <laughs> romance covers with men without shirts. Right. right, and that's a lot of times. I mean, you can't think about it too much. But qu questions arise, such as like, why is everyone else in, on the cover fully dressed, but you're you, you know like what? Yeah. What? Why? Why? Like you, um, you're wearing your badge. And your shirt is completely your unbuttoned. And your hat. Yeah. Like, you like, it's not very one. like professional to walk around with your with your badge on and your shirt unbuttoned. It is I not question your professionalism. I do as well. I do as well. Um, <laughs> and I saw you pulled the two examples you had up there were a cowboy and a duke, right? Well, of course, yeah. And Those are like the two big categories of romance. You can't pull a book off the shelf and and Julia Quinn, author of Bridgerton, is certainly far from the only or the first person to write write about dukes. But um, I said a lot of romance novels are kind of like Duke or fan fiction or cowboy fan fiction 
or what else did I bring here? Um, it's military slash police, which he yeah. is both cowboy and police. Um, oh, or, yeah. or Regency area era nobility. Yeah, right. And included, it's not Regency era era nobility, but don't forget the Scots. <gasps> the Scots, the Highlanders. Got the, got the Highlanders. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then um, I also wanted to draw attention to the use of the words along with Duke, uh, but rogues and rakes, those being, I a rogue. Uh, you know, a less than upstanding character, but of course it turns out he's has a heart of gold anyway. It's just, that's his right. I have a Highlander and a rogue. Like, <laughs> there you go. I have, this is what, I, this is a rogue to remember. Um, if the series for this is a league of scoundrels, Ooh, this is two rogues make a right. <laughs> oh, two right. Rogues, you got the pun in there as well. Right. Two rogues make a right. Well, we got one recently. I don't have it with me, but it was called Hit Me With Your Best Scott. <laughs> and yes. Melanie asked about Fabio doing covers. He did. He's actually okay. been usurped. This was part of my research. He had the most covers for a long time. It was 400 something. But as of December 2019, Jason Aaron Baca, B-A-C-A, -A. you can Google him. There's actually some videos of him being interviewed by a news station and also some print articles. I he have to see his face. He has Go a ahead. skincare. He has an article online that's relatively recent about how about his skincare. Um, because he's in his 40s or he's about 40, somewhere like that. And so about what his skincare routine is that he can continue to do these covers. He has done as of December 2019, 603 romance novel covers. Um, so I recognize that face. I didn't realize it was a real person. I see. And that was the thing. I didn't, it's not, sometimes when you look at these, you don't know, is this like a photo real illustration or did someone really pose for this? And apparently. Okay. I don't know if we're ready to switch gears, but yeah, this one kind of straddles the romance category. Yeah. Um, I picked this one because of its cover. I thought he looked like the poor man's, um, What is his name? He, um, um, that actor, he fights with uh, Ryan Reynolds on Twitter. Um, 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 you judge? Yes, like he, he looks like a, 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 a yeah, like inspired, a by, inspired by Hugh Jackman. I was just like, right. they're trying to make him look like Hugh Jackman. And it doesn't yeah. quite work. And he kind of looks. Yeah. But, <laughs> but now maybe he's a real person. Maybe he's right? Jason. Now I'm going to feel like I've insulted him. I know. Like, and now he says he's older than that. And I want to clarify, the person who's in his 40s was Jason Aaron Baca, not Fabio. Not this guy. Not this guy. Yeah, and who's also not that guy. Um, Jason Aaron Baca is the one who's in his 40s now doing, uh, oh, Kelly Ripa's husband. Um, also might be who she's saying that that looks like yes he does kind of look like him he looks like a mix between the two like so apparently these are real people posing for many of these covers which i did not realize so that is good to know and that one was that one a um you said across genres was that an inspirational it was, it was inspirational love inspired i do have one love inspired um well it's an inspirational romance it says it's not actually a love inspired um it's from zebra but this is just one of the ones that like the title, there's just so much to the title and I love it when they have titles like this. It's the Amish quilt makers, unexpected baby. And <laughs> she doesn't look too stressed that there's an unexpected baby. She seems pretty serene. Um, yeah, yeah, but, that, would, that would probably right. worry um, more people. One of the things about Amish romances too that I have noticed is that so, so, so often the male lead in them is a widower. He already had a wife. She has since passed away, and that makes whatever happens next okay. Um, but I don't know why he, they're not single to begin with. Just a lot of times they have been married once and are now widowed. That seems to be a tro tro trope throughout. Yeah, um, I was, when I was looking at the shelves yesterday, I noticed several widow wid widowers. In the title. And yeah. Liz pointed out um, the Amish Vampires in Space book, which is a library classic. Yes. That's for sure. Real book. And then Melanie points out that the Amish have a lot of secret babies. They do. They have lots of secrets. Like I couldn't believe the number of Amish books was secret in the title. Yeah. Like it was just like, and I was wondering, I pulled these two books 
And I had to wonder, no, that's not the one. If the Amish midwife secret was the uh -huh. reason they were guarding the Amish midwife. Oh my God. <laughs> What did her secret lead to that she needed to be guarded? Yeah, be guarded. That is a really good. Oh my gosh, you've got a built-in theories there. Oh and my it's just, god! It's seeming it's the same words over and over in the title. It is they do. They do. Yeah. And and I don't even know. I don't read a lot of these, but I don't really know even how much the title sometimes has to do with what's happening in the story. I mean, I'm sure it does, but it, like sometimes I feel like the title might. My confuse me. His accidental Amish family. Are they accidentally his family? Are they accidentally Amish? Right. Are they an Amish family who had an accident? Like, are they just <laughs> right. thrown? Like, what is what is what? It's it it it, it leaves me asking questions. So I should probably read you it. Right? Read, that's the point of the title, right? It's to cause you to ask questions. Well, I know. <laughs> Accidental family, like I just accidental Amish family. Did you happen to bring an example of one of the uh, Amish billionaire series books? I didn't. I, I've always wondered how they ended up as billionaires, though. I've never read them. I I know. I know I was they make a lot of money with with like their their animals and their furniture businesses, but a I was. I was digging into it and I didn't I didn't find a physical copy, but I think that there might have been like one original like eccentric uncle who was a billionaire and then that kind of like fed throughout. But there's a series and there's quite a few of them of the Amish billionaire. Carol wonders if it's like greeting cards and people just kind of like come up with titles like, you know. Oh so yeah, and then like someone writes the story to match the title. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> Can we transition to Cozy Mysteries? Absolutely. Okay. So a Cozy Mystery, I just want to, for those those interested, a Cozy Mystery is usually one where an amateur sleuth is solving the crime. I'm wearing a, I won't, I'm wearing an Agatha Christie shirt today because Miss Marple is a good example of a Cozy Mystery amateur, slu amateur sleuth. Um, typically, they are women who kind of stumble into a crime. They tend to be like smart and intuitive, and they might have this other set of skills um, that lend themselves to solving crimes. Um, yes. Usually they take place in like a small town or a village, which explains why everybody knows each other and you can kind of get a feel for what's happening um, just by listening in on conversations. There's a lot of <laughs> listening in on conversations or accidentally casually overhearing. Um, they also don't have a lot of graphic violence. There's no, like, it's just a quick death. There's no torture. It's the point is kind of the solving of the crime and the setting and, and that kind of thing. So, I think you all can picture what a cozy mystery is, but we, I've made the joke before that if people like archeologists or something were looking back in time and found like a cache of library books, they would be like, well, I guess the people who solved crimes then, there, the police weren't really a thing. It was more quilt makers and needlepoint artists. And, and bakers you know, and librarians. Yes, yes, <laughs> bakers. You know, that's just, those are the people who solved crimes back in the 21st century. <laughs> I yes, and sorry. Laura Andrews, she writes some of those. She always has bird-related titles, like we'll always have parrots. Yes. Almost all of the, not almost all, because there, there are some series that don't, but a lot of the cozy mysteries have the best pun titles. They do. And the pun relates to like whatever the person's normal job is. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. um, what is this one? Like the baker is butter off dead. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Oh, Tara offered strangled eggs and ham. Yeah, I pulled some here and so to death. Yes. Yeah, so the titles, the series, even sometimes the series titles are funny. And then just sometimes the occupations of the people are funny. So I have a few, a few things here. Actually, this is my favorite. My favorite offshoot of this, there are a lot of bakers and a lot of chefs and things like that that go really well with punny titles. But some of my favorites, um, this is the one I was looking at before we get on here, a Sarah Winston garage sale mystery. The title is Sell Low, Sweet Harriet. And there are several books in this series and she basically just like 
does a lot of garage sales. As far as I can tell, she has, she, I think she's trying to get into the resale business and she does these big community garage sales, but she also, you know, somehow there ends up being a dead body. And in the first one, or I'm sorry, one of the other ones was called, I know what you bid last summer. I'm guessing she was doing an auction. Um, but I was telling Leah before we started that on this, on this one, she has like so much resale work piling up. She decides to hire some help and it turns out her help, like the assistant she hired was a former FBI hostage negotiator, which seems, you, I, just, I don't know. And I haven't read it. So maybe there's more, maybe there's more of a reason why that happened, but those types of coincidences where you just also happen to know the local coroner who happens to let you see the autopsy reports really do make you better at solving crimes. I don't want anyone to feel bad that they don't solve crimes in their free time because there's usually some kind of connection. That's my problem. That's why I'm not out there solving crimes. Although yeah. I'm really good at solving the crimes when I watch the shows. Um, well, that's something. <laughs> I like the knitters. This one is nice. uh, knit to be tied. Uh, this Maggie Sefton, she's got a pretty sizable knitting. Cozy yeah. Series that, so those are fun. Yes, I had a knitting. I did have a knitting one. I also, as far as a food one goes, stabbed in the baklava <laughs> I, don't really that way. I don't really say baklava but I, that's the, how the pun is it's a kebab kitchen mystery there's several of these I actually had many to choose from of this and I wanted to point out that even though this is a kebab kitchen mystery it's about food there's still a cat on the cover and many of the books that I picked out whether they had to do with animals or not had a cat on the cover <laughs> there's even a cat in this bakery yes there is a cemetery two, me. two cats I mean, keep them away from my baked goods. I don't want cat hair in my croissant. Right? Um, this one, another bakery one, another one bites the crust. I love that. that, I, that love one, that's, I love that title. I um, am all about that. Um, this one, I, I actually have, oh man, I have two that use the claw pun. There's claw enforcement and that is, <laughs> a second chance cat mystery, which I think is a second chance resale shop. And also there's like an adopted cat. And then there's against the claw, which is a lobster shack mystery. I believe the woman uh, owns a, oh, her aunt owns the, the lazy mermaid lobster shack and she's a former ballerina working there. Um, and then this, sorry, one more, this one, hop till you drop. See the shocked look on that rabbit's face. He's found the melted chocolate bunny. And he's like, oh my gosh. And as it turns out, um, the main character in this owns a rabbit rescue, but also communicates telepathically with this rabbit. Um, this is the first in a new series um, by Jennifer Hawkins. It's a chatty corgi mystery to fetch a felon. Um, apparently Emma, his, his person, um, is able to understand Oliver the corgi. Um, I don't exactly know how that understanding happens, and mm -hmm. he appears to be chatty since, and yes, but he- That is awesome. The so, chatty yeah. court mysteries. That is incredible. Um, I have one more I definitely want to mention. Um, again, cat on the cover, 12 Angry Librarians. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cat in the stacks mystery. And this one, I just, I'm actually gonna read what this is about, and I just, when the Southern Academic Libraries Association holds their annual meeting, the interim library director is charged with delivering the welcome speech. And as if that weren't stressful enough, the keynote address will be delivered by her old nemesis from library school. I can you, <laughs> you have library school imagine? nemesis? No, can you even imagine? And I, no. I, 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 it was like the most cooperative group of people ever. No, it was very cooperative, and we're all just trying to get to the next thing. You're just in there to get to the, there's not really time for a nemesis. Uh, but anyway, the nemesis is found dead. And so, of course, she is the prime suspect because they were nemesis -i. Um So anyway, it was... Yeah, it, oh. And um, Andrea has requested a list, so we will have to put these in we'll a list. Put these together. We'll do that this so. afternoon. And then I, I liked this. There's this whole um, occult. It's a Bay Island Psychic Mystery is the series. And the title, Occult and Battery. <laughs> yes. 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 I'm like, yes. 
How is it a mystery if you're a psychic? That's what I want to know. Right. And when you point out a psychic, I did find this one. I didn't, I don't know all the specifics of this one. Uh, this one doesn't have a pun title, so that's why I wasn't crazy about it. It's called Murder Can Mess Up, Mess Up Your Masterpiece, it, but it's a haunted craft fair mystery. So that means there's a craft fair that is always haunted, or in this case, um, someone returns a painting to the craft fair claiming that the painting is haunted. I, I just, so it's kind of like a supernatural, uh, paranormal, cozy mystery, um, and it has a dog on the cover instead of a cat, so that also caught my attention. Oh, this, this, the psychic one also has a dog. Sometimes it's not a cat. Sometimes it's a dog. <laughs> well, yeah, there's typically though, it does seem, typically it does seem like there's a creature because Marshmallow Malice, an Amish candy shop mystery, has a pig running around on the cover. So that also caught my attention. It's just, again, not in any way making fun of these things. I think they're intended to be humorous, eye-catching, memorable, and that's what they're doing. And um, you know what you're getting when you read these. I know people who read some of these and can read one to the end and then say, oh, wait, I think I read this one already. <laughs> because they kind of, they all follow a formula, but that's what you're there for. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's like, you are you know the character so well that like, you know what they would say. So if you've read that line twice, it, it's like, well, it doesn't, it's not so much familiar, it's just what you anticipated. It's- oh, Right, yeah. right. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we'll definitely, we can pull together a list of these this afternoon. I'll enter, I'm surrounded by them. I feel very intimidated by the idea of that right now, but we can definitely do it. <laughs> definitely, yes. Definitely do it. Um, and there are so many genres and subgenres and sub subgenres. One more genre to cover. Oh um, yeah, sorry. The paranormal, mm -hmm. um, because I want to say one thing that I really like about the paranormal books are the like warrior women on the front who just look like they're gonna kick your butt in a fight. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. I tried to say the word I wanted to say to describe them because it's maybe yeah. not library appropriate. So but um, they look they look like they can handle themselves. Right. Which now I wonder, are those real women posing for that? Since we learned about Jason Aaron Baca uh, and stuff. Is that like, I wonder if that's a real woman posing on that cover? This one looks like she might be real, but I think this one is drawn. Yeah. So maybe. No. Yeah. Well, I encourage, there are there are a handful of articles out there. I encourage anyone anyone who, who doesn't mind that being on their Google search history to Google what's it like to shoot a romance novel cover because there are there are <laughs> there are a handful I read one um, about like shooting a cover for a book that was sort of like a Game of Thrones style thing and you know the guy has all these furs on and stuff he's like standing on a box he's crouching down he's got his sword and you know they're they're dressing him in all these things and stuff and I don't know it was just it was just interesting <laughs> so I wonder like like what do you do for a living? I'm a romance cover model. <laughs> like, well, Jason Aaron Baca in the article, uh, that video I watched of him, he has a day job and then he does this. And he said that neither job knows about the other one. I don't know if he's telling the truth or when not. You're doing, when you're on the cover of 600 different books, how can someone not have found out about your other job? Right? Yeah, that seems like a fair question. Or I mean, has it never ever come up? But he described himself as being like Clark Kent, so. <laughs> <laughs> if he's giving interviews about it, I think that maybe, maybe they're going to discover his secret. They, they, they may. So, <laughs> well, thanks for chatting about those. And it sounds like we do have some interest in the comments, which is great. Um, these are the types of things that they don't have, like they don't have like release dates. You're not going to see them promoted in the way that you see the new James Patterson promoted. They're very, very much like a browsing collection so now that we're open again that's awesome you can you know maybe able to choose to come in and browse but you can also call and we can pull we can easily pull the latest or what you might be interested in a few yeah. of each yeah if you tell us you know what i love the paperback cozy mysteries pull me whatever we can we can you can absolutely do that or if you even tell us what like career you want the person to have <laughs> right yeah you see i'm just really interested like, crossword puzzle one yeah. So Joe yeah. Bubbles and yeah, it's it's really interesting. In fairness, I feel like if you're good at doing certain types of puzzles, that actually might make you better at deducing yes. 
uh, you know, solving that, 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 that logical thinking that, right. that is required. right. Yeah. But I think that they, in every book they explain why the person who is, you know, <laughs> the chef at the Chinese restaurant is the person who is good at. Uh, I'm sure they all have a, they all have a good reason. And I'm thinking of Egg Drop Dead. <laughs> That also the author of Murder Lomain, a noodle shop mystery. So, <laughs> noodle shop mysteries. Well, this has been really fun. And uh, yeah. I guess we'll see you guys next week and we'll post a list. Um, yeah, we'll post a list once we get it pulled together. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Type it up and share it on here. Oh, so yeah. I'm sorry. A couple, just a couple more comments. Um, Fantastic Fiction is a website that shows series in order, and that is helpful. And then up yeah. above, um, there was a comment about um, there being a website for cozy mysteries, and there there are certainly, and one that I have used that usually comes up right away is cozy. I think it's cozy-mystery.com, and if you search for cozy mysteries, their results are usually like near the top anyway. Is it like all about romance? Is like one that yes. does like romance books? Yes, I, all I, about I, romance. I've got a couple links. I'll 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 share when I yes. share the 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 the, the books. Yes, all about romance is a good like reader based romance. Mm -hmm. like, other sites like Romance Writers of America, but that's like yeah. for romance writers. Um, yeah. And so, yes, all about romance I think is the one that's pretty good. We'll post some links. I'm glad yeah, people. I've got, some, I've got some stuff bookmarked on my computer at work, and yeah, we'll share that. All right, that sounds good. It was so nice to hang out. <laughs> Very nice seeing you today, Allison. <laughs> all right, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.